Hello everybody, this is Bodrich. Uh, I have um, spent like a day with Cocoon, uh, this text editor uh, that I wanted to try out and um, I don't like it. Um, I don't, the, the <laughs> I just don't like it. Um, I don't even feel like making a video about it. I don't want to use it anymore. I made like uh, this little launcher here so I can start it from the launcher menu here. I set it up with uh, so it uh, looks decent in uh, Alacrity which is the terminal emulator I use and I changed the default color scheme to the light version but it's still like one of the built-in default color schemes. Figured out how to open files, how to um, move around in the editor and use it kind of but I don't like it. It's not that I don't get it uh, I don't like it and um, it's like it feels kind of pointless to sit here and point out everything that I don't like about it why would I do that really what 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 does the does that make anything anywhere better it, it just makes things worse because there are people who like this probably and or there is because it have actually 6800 stars so it is more popular than, for example, Light, the text editor that I do like. Here we have the vanilla Light, because it only has 4.9 thousand stars. So this is a lot more popular. Wink, wink. Uh, For those who want to try Cocoon, uh, I would say that the best thing you can do is first get an understanding on how Vim works. I, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm serious, like that's that's the best way to get started, to understand how Vim works. And you do that by starting Vim, and then I think you can just do Vim tutor is a command, right? Maybe not, whatever, you, you run Vim tutor, however you do that. Uh, isn't, maybe there is, or no, this is how it works. Vim tutor is a command here, isn't it? Yeah. This. You install Vim and then you run Vim tutor and then you go through this uh, interactive, in quotation marks, tutorial on how to use Vim if you don't know how to use it. When you have done that, then you will understand how Vim works. Uh, at least on a superficial level, but that's enough. Because then you can read this document, migrating from Vim to learn the differences uh, between Vim and Cocoon, because Cocoon is in many ways uh, uh, similar to Vim. It is inspired by Vim, it strives to be as efficient. It, it has a lot of similarities, but it's kind of important to understand the differences, uh, to understand how Cocoon works. And this is not why I don't like it. I think many of these things kind of make sense here and they are really interesting. I even like how uh, these multiple selections and uh, that visual mode is kind of normal mode in, in Cocoon and blah blah blah. It's uh, it kind of, that is not my issues uh, really. Um, but this is the best way to get an understanding how to work with it is, is to get this <clears throat> Vim Rosetta Stone thing here, this document, uh, and I am in the wiki here on the Cocoon GitHub, by the way. So that's one way. Another good uh, uh, thing here, uh, actually quite cool, uh, is this Cocoon TV thing. If I hit play here, it will play a, a short little terminal session here, and what they are doing is solving uh, a small editor text editing task. They solved it, solved this in as few keystrokes as possible. Nine keys is the solution here in Cocoon and this, these are those nine keys. Uh, this, the problem they are solving here is taken from uh, a website that's called vimgolf.com. Uh, sadly now, it seems like vimgolf.com is having some server issues or something, so I cannot see these original uh, 
challenges, which they call it here. You can see there are a bunch of different challenges here, quite a few. I'm not sure which one, uh, there is actually a lot of them here. But uh, so, something is uh, iffy with the servers here, so if I click on one of these I will just get an error. Or maybe it works. Now it, now it works. It haven't worked in... in uh, I've tried this several times here and I have never been able to open any of these. Well, this is what you mo uh, get most of the time. We're sorry about something went wrong uh, box here. So it doesn't matter what this is. Um, I guess, did I lose the... No, here it is, Cocoon TV. Because we can see the, the uh, problem here. Um, this is the input file, and this is the output file, the solution to, to the input file. And then you can kind of uh, see what, what uh, has been changed in the input here. And here, uh, the, the, the problem is even stated here, but that is not always the case. I wish they, they could include uh, the, the actual stuff there from Vim Golf as well here, but they haven't, but whatever. <clears throat> so this problem is to make uh, pairs of lines match up by making each second line same as first. Uh, meaning that here we have two lines, um, appending text, so the, the problem here is to append text to this line, making it the same as this one. So basically appending this to this line and here uh, editing text. Here there is a difference between these two lines. So you have to change uh, the text, the second line here. And here uh, you are supposed to delete this line. <coughs> so when... Uh, the solution looks like this. Both lines looks the same. Not a big deal. Uh, but the cool thing here is that uh, it both shows you the solution in Cocoon, but it also describes each and every of these uh, commands that are actually entered here. So percentage to select the whole buffer, S to select the regex in, inside that selection. Uh, the regex is just a sharp, meaning select all sharps. So then you get multiple cursors here, and then you press enter, then you move down, and then you select the line, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's kind of easy to follow, especially when you got the video here, because then you can play the video. And then we can see there, percentage, select whole buffer, first thing there, and then S, uh, select regex. You can see there, now S is pressed and then they enter the regex here in the prompt and that gives uh, gives you three uh, uh, cursors, or no, sorry, sorry Cocoon, there are no cursors, there are only selections. And you can continue following along here. Uh, it's really easy to get a sense on how to work with Cocoon by watching this. And, and they have also made a thing out of this that uh, in Vim, the, the shorter solution, at, at least when they created this page, was 11 keys in Vim, but they can do it in nine keys here in Cocoon. And many of these uh, problems are solved in, in short, fewer keys with Cocoon. I think that is what this number in parentheses here um, means that here, for example, minus three, that is probably three keys shorter than the Vim solution. And this is a different uh, uh, problem. Whatever. Uh, the, it's, it's a good way to get a sense on how to use uh, Cocoon and how it works and stuff like that. Because you get like uh, everything. You, you can see it in action, you can follow along, you can see the solution like this, and you can see the solution like this. I think this is very good, actually. So that's a thing, that's a good thing, um, but I don't like Cocoon anyways. I don't like it. When I, when I started using it, I didn't like it. Uh, and there are so many awkward uh, things and it's like everything feels like it's twisted, like they have twisted everything just for the sake of it in, in a way. Uh, and it's also very much all over the place, uh, Cocoon, and it have this very very awkward or awkward but strange plugin configuring system where you can execute shell script meaning that you can execute like awk or javascript or whatever you can execute in a shell you can execute it as a plugin blah 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 i don't like it i don't like it uh, but the thing that is the deal breaker here for me is um, how it 
works with multiple files. I, I just don't get uh, how you're supposed to, to do that. Um, did I open Cocoon? Yeah, we have it here. So we have Cocoon here, I can open a file. Let's open the config file for Cocoon here. Ah, edit there, and then CACRC. There, this is the config file, this is the only configuration I've done. Change the color scheme here. I think it might actually work to just, if we change that and then write this. No, it didn't work. Uh, I thought it would automatically uh, use this color scheme, but it doesn't. You have to resource the, the configuration file, but whatever. Um, Let's open another file. Let's save this first and then we can open, for example, yeah, let's open the light config, whatever. Just want to show you, um, ah, same thing here. E for edit and then light Excel and then um, uh, init Lua there, for example. There it opens this and you can see the syntax highlighting, everything works fine. But now we have kind of two uh, um, files open. There's no indication of this, that we have that. And I'm not even sure that we do have two files open. I have no idea how this works. Uh, you can do this. Uh, I haven't found a way to get a, a list of the files, but if you select, for example, buffer next here, that will go to the next open buffer. If we do it again. There's the Cacoon uh, configuration. There is the, the, the light Excel configuration. And of course you can go to buffer previous as well here and with the alias PP if you want to do that. So that kind of works, but there is no like tab bar. There is no way to list these as far as I understand here. Uh, there probably is, and I know there even is, because if you look into the wiki again, in the official documentation here, you can see I stumbled upon this page, bar, which explains how you can get a tab bar in Cocoon here. We can see this image here. It's a tab bar, shows which is the active file. This tab bar is actually a lemon bar, like a lemon bar is like polybar, kind of. And I guess we could use polybar as well for this. So they are actually using a third party program like a status bar to display the open files. And you also need to create this custom little plugin here for Cocoon to pipe the information here. I guess if I read this, I can probably figure out how to list the open files and stuff, but and this is the official documentation that tells you things like this. There is no like, what, how, what is the supposed workflow to work with multiple files? Because most of us work with uh, projects in some kind of way. You have multiple files. Maybe you are a developer on Cocoon. It have like multiple files. It's not a single file that you need to operate on. Uh, and I'm sure if I really, really uh, determine is determined, I will figure out how to get a uh, workflow doing all of this. But it's like I get annoyed constantly by all kinds of things. And it's like, um, it's not, I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to use it. Also the name Cocoon, it's stupid. It's a stupid name. It starts with a K first and foremost, which is for KDE applications. But okay, whatever, you can call it Cocoon. But why do you call it Cocoon? And then nowhere else, nowhere else except like on the homepage and the repository, it's called Cocoon. Everywhere it's called CAC. Even the, the configuration uh, file, the directory where you store the configuration, dot config slash CAC slash CAC RC. Nowhere is Cocoon used anywhere else. And the thing is, even if Cocoon is a really, really stupid name, CAC is even worse. Do I have to explain that? And it makes me annoyed. <laughs> uh, 
especially since I have a YouTube channel where I constantly have to say, oh, I'm using Cocoon. It's Cocoon, 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 but it's actually CAC. CAC, 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 CAC. Stupid. Makes me annoyed. And it's like, when you thought you couldn't get more annoyed, you know, then you uh, try to, hmm, maybe I should open a file. And then you get this guy. Ha 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 ha! I will not use this program. Um, sorry, sorry. There are so many weird things going on with it. It's it's too too much weirdness. Uh, it feels unfocused in in some kind of way, and it annoys me. That I guess that's that's what it boils down to. You know, I don't like it. I don't like it, uh, and I I get angry when I use it, and I don't want want that. I just want to get on. I have stuff to do in my text editors. I don't like the fact that it's a terminal emu uh, based um, text editor. I thought it wouldn't matter that much, but it annoys me. It, uh, it annoys me, all the UI elements here. You know, if this was a normal GUI application, this, this would look different. First and foremost, I wouldn't have this gigantic font everywhere here, but I kind of need to choose a font. And of course, the font I, I write in is the font that decides how everything else is presented, meaning that everything will be gigantic large since I like a large font whatever and what oh I don't like it I don't like it at all and I also it, it almost or it almost at the moment at least today I, I don't want to use this either even if I haven't tried this now at all but I I, I feel I don't want to do that either right now because I know that all this also doesn't have any uh, uh, concept of, of uh, file managing, project managing, whatever. And I thought that would be okay. That I could would find a third party solution. For example, I found this project or project this program called Brute, uh, which is uh, something that you could probably use as, as a companion uh, uh, program for, for managing multiple files together with your text editor. It is, I'm sure it, it, it's great, or it is actually great. It's very impressive how this uh, Brute pro program works. It lists file in a directory and you can search and you can grab the files and it's insanely fast. It's written in Rust, it's great. And I'm sure I could get used to that together with uh, Cocoon and Vis. But at the moment, uh, I will definitely not choose Cocoon. Maybe this is great, but I, right now I don't even I don't want to use that either. I think I will stick to light here now, because uh, light light may light was nice and uh, felt good. It felt good using light. And it doesn't feel good using. Oh, maybe I never created. Oh, whatever. But light, light, light is nice. Cocoon is not. I will not use it. Maybe I am damaged after all my years with, with Sublime. I don't know. Um, or damaged, whatever. whatever. Something tells me that uh, I thought, you know, Cocoon, I thought that was a lot more used and popular. I was surprised to see this uh, low star count considering what kind of program it is and it has been a long for a long, around for a long time. But I wonder if uh, not a lot of users might have, oh, this is cool. So seen the wiki, read the documentations, the, that is also the documentation itself is also scattered all 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 over the place and this tutorial here uh, which is supposed to be like a vim tutor but for cocoon is just a document it's not like vim tutor it gives you small exercises you should do with the vim commands and explains them and it takes you through it, it, it vim tutor is really good this thing, it describes how everything works but it doesn't give you any small exercises like that it just like 
gives you hypothetical exercises. So you're kind of supposed to, yeah, for example, in a log file, you could, uh, and if the log file looked something like this, maybe you could do it. Why couldn't they just have a little sample log file here that could let me try out the commands they just described um, and stuff like that. It's all, I don't know. Uh, but that's the thing. It's a good thing, I guess, to walk through this. But as I mentioned, the best best way to get an understanding from on how it works is understanding Vim, reading, migrating from Vim, and looking at Cocoon TV. And after I had done that, I was kind of excited about using it. But the more I used it, the more irritated I got, and I, I, I don't want to use it. Whatever. Uh, and I will not enable comments on this video. Uh, I think I will will uh, stick to, to, to light for a while here now. And I think I can get that working. I have also considered, I have seriously considered uh, paying for Sublime or just keep on using Sublime 3 or not paying for Sublime and getting the nag box. I, I have seriously considered those options and I'm not ruling them out. Uh, I also considered installing VS Code, you know, because that that works. The, this stuff, I I I just want to get as far as far away from it as possible. Uh, that's how I feel now. I I know I didn't. I had no idea. Uh, <laughs> this uh, I, it it um, uh, that I would feel this way, but I do. Uh, whatever. Some people probably like this. Um, some people don't. It's not for everyone, that's for sure. And it's not for me. Okay, have a great day, everybody. Bye.